So today we are going to be building Sunsetter. Sunsetter, in case y'all uh, don't know, it's a 65% board with a two column macro row on the left side here and the very infamous 2U blocker for absolutely no reason. I managed to be quick enough to get the number one uh, black color. So the group I ran in two colors, black and E-white, 100 each. Uh, the black was, I believe, $390 and the white was $400. We have a goodie bag and in this goodie bag, we essentially have, we have some stickers. I heard these stickers are used for something about the badge. There are some gaskets. This is a gasket mounted keyboard, it's called fiber cloth. It's their logo here. Some screws and Allen wrench here. This looks to be like a build guide. I actually do like uh, reading instructions, so I will definitely be referencing this as we as we build it. Comes with a polished brass plate, which I will not be using. I bought an extra palm plate for this build. It does include some plate. Uh, it's not foam. I guess it's really this is really plate. It's a gasket. It's a plate gasket here. It's a piece of rubber. I will say it's not like the best looking gasket I've seen. Some of the cuts seem a little rough, but overall, I mean like, I'm not gonna be looking at it, so it doesn't really matter. I won't open this PCB because I actually already have opened one of the PCB. Sorry, Mill Maxes, which I wanted to do is a big pain in the butt. Um, so this is what the PCB looks like. Got a sun theme going on here. Right, we'll see what the back looks like. Uh, it's just a sunsetter. Let's go ahead and take a look at the case first. So it is a two-piece case. Let's take, a, let's take a look at the top piece first. This is where the badge, the front badge is going to be. Here is the bottom part of the case. So this is where these gas, uh, gaskets are, are gonna go, right here. Uh, this is the back. So this is where the back weight is gonna go. Oh, the exterior. Um, let's see if there are any machining marks. I don't think there are. Uh, it's gonna be a hard time trying to focus on black. Oh, okay, there we go. I'm not seeing any sort of machining marks on the exterior, which is always a good sign. Uh, let's see if I can get the focus on this side. Okay, there we go. Let's take a look at the badge options. And, ah. This right here is the second part of the back weight. What that looks like, I believe it just, yeah, so one second, let me just plop, plop this in here for y'all, what that looks like. Mm -hmm. Oh wait, I, oh, I have three options? Let's see, a red badge, a polished brass badge, and an orange badge. I'll be building this with the palm plate that I bought as an extra here and it came with the extra metal gasket. Before we do all of that, uh, I need to show you guys the stabilizers. Stabilizers that I'm going to be using are the OA stabilizers by Wu Chui Studios. So these ran on Canon keys uh, a while back, I think like earlier this year or something like that. And they they were just made to match the OA switches with the transparent aqua housing. And I'm going to be using uh, the same lube that I used for the back of nickel build, if you guys saw that, 205G0 for the housing and the Crytox BDZ lube for the, uh, the, uh, the wires. Um, and I bought this one from 3D Keebs. And in case you guys didn't know, if you're considering using this like thicker BDZ lube, you definitely want to get a separate paintbrush for this, um, just because it, it, is, it is very, very thick. And you can kind of see like the level of residue on this paintbrush here. Um, it's just easier just to get a new paintbrush. Don't reuse a paintbrush that you're already using for other lubricant. It's just be a, it's a pain. I like your back and neck of it. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you liked it. Um, you know, when I was making that video, I was, I wasn't, I think I underestimated the, um, the crowd of not beginners who'd be interested in getting it. I, I, I approached it from the perspective of, I, I'm new to, I am new to custom keyboards. I don't have one yet. What should I buy? 
Uh, and, and so that's why I kind of left out some things and I chose to purposely left out information, some information that a newbie don't really care about as much. Um, and try to streamline it a bit more, but just kind of like maybe reading around on Discord and stuff. It seems like there's a lot of people who, who's, who are interested in it who, are, who already have like other keyboards. And I think it's because they, um, they just want to try out maybe the old ring gasket. And you know, you can always like uh, get it seracoded to really fix up the finish, which is really the biggest downside with the back of Neko is the painted finish isn't like, you know, pristine or anything. Um, but you know, for 50 bucks, you can get it coated okay, and it would be honestly a pretty nice keyboard for like 200 bucks. Oh, so enter, enter is here. What is this one for? I guess this is for, I guess this is for a long shift. Oh yeah, I guess you can also use a long shift for this board, but I like arrow keys, so I'm not using a long shift. Every time there's always like so many cutouts in one spot of PCB, my brain just kind of shuts down. I desoldered these from my E6.5 a while ago, and I just haven't used them yet. And um, the reason why I desoldered them because that 70 gram spring weight was just too heavy for me, so I spring swapped them with 65 grams um, DL springs from Thick Thock, and yeah, I, I I really love them now. I just haven't got a chance to use them yet, so hopefully, I can just keep them on this board. That is one thing I do like about starting switches is that you don't have such a pain. It's not a pain to just get them in because the hole is a lot bigger. This one, I feel it's not it's not going in, and I don't want to I don't want to bend legs right now. Oh, and as as I say that, I already bent the leg. <laughs> oh boy, let me get some tweezers. You guys can kind of see it here. A little bent. Ooh, Evangelion themed keyboard. You know, I've never seen Evangelion, um, and maybe I should. I don't know. I feel like there's so many like references to to that anime, um, but I don't know. I just all I'm gonna say is I just don't watch an anime any anymore. The most recent one is just Jujutsu Kaisen, just because Leanne was watching it. Um, but I might watch. I told her that I was gonna watch Haikyuu just because she loves Haikyuu and I feel like I should maybe watch it just because she likes it so much. I haven't started Haikyuu yet. I really should start that at some point. What is your top anime on your My Anime list? You know, I actually never... Do I have a My Anime list? I think I do, but it's been so long. Uh, my top one is probably Brother full FMA Brotherhood. Um, and, no, that's kind of cliche to say, but I really do like Brotherhood a lot. And I really like Steins Gate. Steins Gate, initially for me, I was like, what is this anime? But you know, Steins Gate is great. I, I, I really like Steins Gate a lot. I like Psycho Pass Season 1. Psycho Pass Season 2 was whatever. <laughs> the anime about man mangaka, which was originally a manga about mangaka. I, I forgot the name now. I like that one a lot too. Mob Cycle is great. One Punch Man Season 1 was great. One Punch Man Season 2 was trash. Four, plays back badge into weight screw and weight to bottom case all right let's do that here is the bottom case and wow i am just misplacing everything how did i misplace a giant brass weight okay i just banged my my monitor that would have been super bad okay yep that is a lot better it's not loose anymore all right step five screw in the front badge to the top case here is the front case i'm gonna use i'm gonna use the, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna use the orange one in case y'all are wondering um for the sunsetter a round two will, will be run in different colors i don't believe black or white will be run again um but you know after the stream if you're interested in, in picking one up um join their discord server to stay updated oh also extras haven't been sold yet actually for the black or white um, they have been raffling them in, via their system, but their first come first serve extras has not been released yet. So either you know, if you're interested in picking one up, you can wait out for, for the first come first serve extras, or you can join the round two for other colors. Orange badge is installed. Six, attach gasket tab to the top and bottom cases. Oh, okay. Oops, that one's not straight. I wonder if I should use tweezers for this. Okay, there we go. Okay, just four more sticky gaskets. 
The last and final step is to screw the case and PCB together and to attach the bump on. Where are my bump ons? <laughs> uh... <laughs> you bought the sword and sucker of about <laughs> soldering and stuff. That's pretty funny. <laughs> Gratifying sounds. Yeah, it is, it is a super nice sound. Uh, the mountain Alice is oh, solder only. Okay. Yeah, I mean, soldering is like not too difficult, especially with keyboards. Like, it's very forgiving. As I mentioned, we will be using EMK dots. This is from the first round. You know, it's old when you still have the plastic GMA trays. Oh god, the new trays are terrible. The keycaps are touching. I don't know why that's the case. Alright, post stream updates time. First off, I didn't miss the bump ons in my package, they were just missing in general, which was a common issue for some folks in this group buy. But overall, it's not that big of a deal, and Dot, the original group buy runner, is sending me some. And regarding the issue I had with the keycaps of the pipe and enter key colliding, at first, I thought this was a black ink plus palm plate um, issue. Uh, turns out that wasn't really the case. I first made sure that the middle max sockets on the PCB were seated all the way down, and then I even tried to remove the socket in general, but both of them uh, made no difference in the keycap colliding. Finally, I decided to do a complete rebuild with a clean PCB, and then I had no issues with any keycaps. My best guess here is that not all the sockets were completely flush against the PCB and those small variances caused issues with the pipe key switch sitting correctly on the plate. Now that I had some time with this keyboard, here are my overall thoughts about the group by process and the keyboard itself. First off, this was one of the better group buys that I've been in. There were constant updates in the Discord server and the original um, timeline of delivery in April was met for the most part. There were some issues with the EY sunsetters with the bubble marks, but personally I was not affected because I did not buy the white case, I bought the black one. As for the keyboard, I'm really liking it. I didn't think I would like the 2U blocker as much as I do, but I really think it gives the keyboard a nice characteristic. And I really appreciate that you have three colors to choose from, the brass, orange, and red, uh, with the option to buy additional colors. With the extra two columns on the side, I do get confused sometimes and thinking the escape key is over here when it's actually right there. Um, but over time, I think I'll just get used to this layout and that won't be an issue. The sand blasted brass weight on the back is nice and even, and I like how you were able to purchase other colors and even materials for the sun. The keyboard was easy to build, the included instructions were clear, and with my palm plate build, there's a nice amount of flex. Shifting gears to what could be improved. First off, the included screws are not great. I'm already starting to strip some of the heads, so I ordered some Torx screws from Amazon as a replacement. I think it would be a nice touch if the USB connection was recessed a bit to hide the USB connection. And lastly, it would have been great if Via worked out of the box instead of having to use a JSON file in the design tab. If you're interested in picking up a Sunsetter, Extras will be released on May 5th at 9 a.m. Pacific time, and there will also be a round two in different colors. All right, that's it for me today. I'll end the video with a typing test. Do note that I currently don't have the bump ons on my sensor because I don't have them yet, so that may affect the sound that you're hearing. Please like the video if you found it interesting, and subscribe to stay updated on my future content. Until next time.